Hello, everybody. How exciting is this? This is my first ever sew along. Welcome. So here with me today, I have got Dave, obviously he's on the computers, and I've got Steph here. And Steph is going to try and read out some of your questions. So if you've got any questions, get typing away. So hi, Steph, how are you? Hello, good, thank you. Hello, everyone. And how many people have we got so far? We've got 11 people at the moment. 11? Oh, hello, everyone. Nice to see you. Now, I'm going to waffle a little bit just so that more people can join. And if they don't, oh, well, we just get on with it. So how many of you are going to come and sew along with me? Are any of you got your machine set up? Have you got your your um, crumbs ready and all your pattern? Are, are any of you ready? Are any of them ready, Steph? There are a few people commenting saying that they oh. couldn't, couldn't wait for this. They're really yeah. looking forward to it. We've got Gabriella, Elaine. Hi, Gabriella, Elaine. Sarah, Sarah. Elaine. Oh, hello. It's so exciting. Um, it's gone a bit grey here. It is live. We're in London. Um, I've got. A, we're in. Oh, I better tell you where we are. I'm in my kitchen. <laughs> Believe it or not, this is my kitchen. And next week I'll do. I'll do some backstage photographs because we're all crammed into my kitchen, so that you can see how what the setup is like. You know, it is a little bit bananas here. But yeah, we're in my kitchen and it's live i have a glass roof above my head so if it starts raining you might hear the rain i have two pussy cats here at home and i can't guarantee that they won't won't make an appearance but i fed them i'm having a little nap um and it's live so anything could happen but um how are we doing with people joining are we still on 11 or has it gone down 18 now 18 we're going up Hello everyone. Anybody else join that I can say hello to, Steph? There's a lady called Valerie. Hi Valerie. Sharon. Hi Sharon. And that's it for the minute. Oh, okay. So I'd better tell you what I'm going to be doing today. So some of you may have seen my uh, crumb patchwork pattern. And today I'm going to be doing design number 11 out of this. There are actually 12 designs you can do in the pattern here um all the instructions etc in there but this would be like um a workshop with me really so we're going to go slow i'm going to show you how i do it and you can do it at home so even if you're not set up to sew today you can it it'd be on youtube you can rewind and watch and sew along with me so what i have done oh i've got some of the i've got some things to show you before i get onto that so i've got my pack there so I was testing it out, and here's a lovely little box I made with the um, the ones I, I I just I thought I'd better keep practicing with them, so I knew what I was doing today, because you know it is live. Um, so there's a little box I made with my practice ones. Sorry about that. And then this is one I made um, a while ago. That's different designs. Okay that's so cool and this is all scraps this is all fabric that you might have thrown away and then i'm making i need to move my iron for a second and um, i'm making a quilt so these are all using my scraps and they are in the hexagons so you can, this is all bits and bobs that i would you would normally throw away but look how effective that is, I mean, I'm, I'm just loving it. It's not finished yet, the quilt. I've got a lot to go, but I do love it. So that, this just shows you what you can do with them. So have we had any more questions, Steph, or anybody joined us? We have had a question from Ooh. Gabriella. Hi, Gabriella. It's not quite linked to the crumb along, but it okay. is linked to something we were talking about before. Oh. Are you going to be doing a tutorial on your stencils and paints you use? <gasps> Oh, funny you should say that, Gabriella. Yes, we will be, hopefully. If this goes okay and we've not got too many hiccups, because you never know, this might go a bit pear-shaped. Um, but if this works out well and people like it, then yes, I intend to do more. Um, so, yeah, watch this space. Good question. Thank you very much. And we've got 27 people with us now. Hey, oh, have we got any from America? 
Not that I know of. Oh. Say hello if you're from USA. Yes, yeah, say hello. I made it four o'clock today because I know it's early morning US or morning ish, depending on where you are in the US. So I thought I'd make it Sunday afternoon for us in the UK in the morning for the US. So I I think I'm gonna start. Do you think that's a good idea, team? Yep. Yeah. That's right. Yay. So here is my design on my sheet. And what I've done prior to prior to today is drawn out my design on some interlining. So if I place that over there, you can see all I've done is drawn all the lines from the pattern and then put all the numbers in the boxes because it's sewing with numbers this really um although it's a crumb along it is also sewing by numbers and right on cue my little jasper boy cat has just joined us oh he's going they've been nice and quiet so that's the first thing i've done and what i'm going to do i do sell a pack of crumbs with the interlining and the pattern so i thought I'd, this is a pack that i've made up and i'm going to just use this so here are all my crumbs and what the as we're going to be sewing by numbers we're going to be sewing number one and number two Unless my little girl cat crying now. Sorry, Ella, go away, pop it. <laughs> um, so we need a piece of fabric that will cover number one and cover number two. And now number two is a teeny tiny bit of fabric. Yes, it is, Ella. Thank you very much. But I'm, I want a bigger bit for the... Oh, I've got loads in here. Oh, this is exciting. I, I won't know what to use. Um, this looks like perfect size and it's got a nice design on it. So what I'm going to do, and this doesn't need pressing, but beware, it has got a bit of a selvage. So I'm just going to put my glasses on and I'm going to trim that selvage because I don't want that to come through in my design. And I'm going to keep a pile of my scraps aside as well. I'm going to turn this over and position this fabric over the top and i'm going to pin it in in place but then i'm going to turn it back over to see if it's covered all the areas it should do and it's i don't know if you can pick it up on the, the screen i need at least quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way around and i'm a little bit shy on this section between four and five and i'm a little bit shy on that section three so i'm going to turn it over it's worth doing because if you want to make this for a quilt you need the proper seam allowances because when you come to wash it if you've only got really scant seam allowances over time the fabric will fray and it will come apart and you don't want that so you need decent seam allowances if you're just going to make something like the box then all you you don't have to worry about seam allowances so you know it depends on what your crumbs are going to be used for on how much seam allowance but i'd recommend a quarter of an inch so let's turn that back over and oh look you can see now that we've a bit better we're a bit scant on this side but i think i can live with this because i don't know what i'm going to use this sample for so i'm not going to panic too much about that but i need a little section that will cover number two because we're going to sew between one and two but before we do that what i'm going to do i'm just turning that round and i'm going to turn back on that that seam this is the seam we're going to sew here but what i'm going to do i'm just going to trim that fabric so it's a quarter of an inch so i know where to line up my fabric number two this will hopefully is making sense and it will all come clear so i need a little bit that will cover number two and i think that will do it so if i if i take that bit i'm going to leave it long i'm going to turn it over and place that on fabric number one and pin it and when we turn that back you can see i've still got fabric there and i'm going to stitch on this line between one and two i'm going to use a very short stitch length on my machine 
so that I can pull when I've decided what I'm going to use this for I can pull away the interlining and then it will become like a fabric if you keep the interlining there it will be a little bit stiffer no big deal depending on what you want to use it for if you're using copy paper to uh, draw out your designs definitely use a tiny stitch because you can pull the paper away a lot easier I'll show you that at the end but I just wanted to let you know that's the, a very small length of stitch so I'm going to stitch between one and two so to the sewing machine and I'm just going to stitch slightly before the line now if you're going to use this on a quilt do a, a back stitch or as a, or an inny outy stitch but I can't Steph what is an inny outy stitch called again a locking stitch a locking stitch I always get that wrong so either an inny uh, lock stitch or a back stitch if you're going to use it on a quilt do you want your seams to be secure and you don't want your quilt to fall apart this I don't know what I'm going to do with so I'm not going to bother I'll just go and I'm going to do a couple of stitches over the line as well take that out snip and we can see here I've stitched between one and two and I've used black thread use a thread that will uh, coordinate like a white or a cream or a light grey if you're going to be doing this I'm just using the black so you can see my stitch lines don't know if we can zoom in any further on that no that's it sorry um, and then I'm going to turn this over take my pin out and fold this fabric back and I'm going to take my iron and give that a little press like that and that that fabric's all there you've got your seam allowance there I'm going to turn it over again and then I'm going to fold between two and eight I did do this wrong in practicing and I cut it shorter so if you make a mistake don't worry just add another bit of fabric in it's fine um, so I'm going to fold that back and then I am going to give a quarter of inch seam allowance on that bit oh, like that that goes in my pole so it's still a nice big bit of fabric so when I've turned that over we've got one and two stitched down so it's paint, uh, stitching by I need to say painting by numbers it's stitching by numbers so now we've got to do between one and three so we need to find a bit of fabric to cover number three now while I'm doing that Steph have we had any questions any comments do we I need had to... a lot of hellos from USA oh, so we've got Marie and Shelley both from Michigan <gasps> hello Marie and Shelley from Michigan we've Ooh. got Kelly from Alabama Kelly from Alabama. Susan from New Jersey. Wow, thank you. Thank you. Sue from Arizona. Perfect. Elizabeth has managed to join us. Oh, what from the UK? Yes. Hello, Elizabeth. And I have a question for you from KB. Oh, she hi. said yes to more lives, please. <gasps> if you obviously enjoy the live. Oh, so far. <laughs> Wait till the end. <laughs> And she wants to know, do you sell crumbs on their own as she's already got the pattern? Oh, wow. No, I don't. But get in touch with me and I'll sort something out for you, my lovely. Just for you. Yeah, email me um, at Daisy and Grace and I'll, I'll sort something out for you. Um, so I better get carry on, haven't I? But keep the questions coming. Tell us where you're from from the UK as well. We're not, we're not all about just America. We love having you. But we're, there's lots of Brits here as well. Anyway, waffling, waffle alert. There we go. I've got to stop myself. So I'm going to fold between one and three and going to just trim that seam allowance. There was a little corner left over and I'm going, just going to cut that little seam allowance. I'm going to take my fabric. Again, it's too big for this really, but it's a pretty such a pretty color so I'm going to pin that in place and now I've got to stitch between two and three and one and three so I've got to stitch this line across here so I'm back to, I'm going to just trim my threads I love trimming my threads because it makes your work neater in the end and back to the sewing machine I'm going to sew between that between two and three and one and three is anyone sewing along with me at home Steph or are they all going to go back to it later 
No one has said they're sewing along, but if you comment, I'll read your name out if you're sewing along. Perfect. We've had a lot of messages saying how much they're enjoying this. Oh, really? You haven't got a lot to do on a Sunday afternoon, have you? <laughs> no, I love having you here. At least I'm not just talking to Steph and Dave, am I? I've got a few more people. So, again, I'm going to go back to the demo. Um, I've stitched between one and three and um, uh, one two and three and one and three and i've stitched along there and i've gone across the edges like so so turn over again it's all turning stitching turning now i'm gonna waffle again can i tell a little story steph can i tell a little story oh she can she was nodding that's not very good <laughs> Sorry, you can't hear me <laughs> it's not very good when when you can't see her but she's going Yes, tell a story. <laughs> really, I'm it's training. <laughs> it's her first TV thing, but watch this space. Um, waffle, my story. I better get on with it. Now, when your mojo, your sewing mojo, walks out the door and you don't see it anymore. I wasn't gonna I was gonna sing, but I wasn't. Um when your sewing mojo goes, mine goes quite frequently because I do so much sewing, sometimes I just go these are all scraps you're not going to you're not going to waste anything you're actually going to create some amazing things with this because it doesn't matter what it turns out with you you, you can create some amazing things and i like getting all my crumbs and sitting at my sewing machine and just playing and i tell you what my mojo comes back like that because you're having fun you don't have to worry about anything yeah this is a great idea anyway back to what we're doing so i've stitched and i've pressed open so now i need to trim that back between three and nine and and four there so this is will be the seat this is where we need to trim it to so i'm going to turn that back fold that over all the instructions are in the pattern as well so you've got this you've got the pattern you'll be good to go so that's quite a, a big chunk i'm going to use that for something else so i'll put that aside and then we're going to use another fabric to cover this section number eight so i'm going to fold that or oh, and i can't fold it because i've stitched but you see i've left a quarter of an inch seam allowance on my other fabric so i'm just going to trim that up there oh look at that nice big chunky juicy bit that's going into something else as well mm. so exciting because you never know what it's going to turn out like and you never know what you're going to use next so any ideas throw out some colors for me people if you want to see some colors in there and i'll, I'll grab something but i've trimmed the seam allowance between one and four can you see there's a sort of a routine with this it's sort of quite therapeutic and as long as you trim as you go you're all right you can make mistakes at the end i'll show you one i made earlier <laughs> so this is a bit wonky so i'm going to give that a bit of a press this bit I, I i pressed it i don't know if i'm going to use it what do you think we've had a color katie said blue oh that was, nice blue color there, well, you go. there we go <laughs> we're thinking alike <laughs> Uh, uh, were we separated at birth or something we we were on the same wavelengths there weren't we what was her name sorry steph kv kv we we're on the same wavelengths thank you we're going for blue so i've lined that up i've put a little pin in there and i've kept the pin away from where i'm going to sew on because you don't want to sew over your pin very costly exercise trust me i have another sewing machine that uh, oh have i gone far enough no i nearly made a mistake because i'm talking so much so you see see under here i'm covering number four and can you see my fabrics really scant this end so i'm going to shuffle it along a bit if you do make a mistake it doesn't really matter we can cover that up later but i'd rather try and get it right for you so there we go let's pin that in place so i'm going to stitch on number four between one and four so again a few stitches and now my thread's gone 
I said it was live, didn't I? Excuse me, I've got to do a little bit of management. So you might as well carry on watching. I've lost my thread completely. While Nicola repairs her machine. Thank you, Steph, to my <laughs> rescue. We've had a few more hellos from the UK and the US. Perfect. So Hello. Sandy from Rutland. Hello, Sandy. Kaylee's from the Wirral. Oh, lovely. We're all over the shop. Victoria's from Florida. <gasps> I bet it's nice oh. and sunny there. Not like here. It's been warm though, Steph. <laughs> it has. We, we are have, slowly getting the summer. We are slowly, but it's a, just gone a bit grey this afternoon. It was beautiful this morning. And a Sorry. few people have said they are sewing along with you. We've got Sarah in Tamworth. I bet you haven't made this mistake, Sarah. <laughs> and Elizabeth is sewing along with you as well. Oh, Elizabeth, thank you, darling. Oh, and thank you. Kristen has asked, at the end, could yeah. you show the back of the quilt? The part oh. Can you show the back, please? Did you see that when I was on the telly box? Because <laughs> it's got a bit big, bigger now, and it's coming along. And it's, well, when I did it on the TV, it was a table runner, but I loved it so much, I want to make a quilt. But yes, I'll show you the back. I might have to have some help from Dave, if he can. If he can. But we'll do that at the end. Thank you. It is growing. It's looking well. I hate it when I say everything looks fabulous because it's my idea, my my things. But if I don't, who else will? Yeah. We've got to we've got to be proud of what we do, haven't we? So I've stitched that. Stop waffling again, Nicola. Sorry. And um, stitched between. The, there's a bit that goes over three onto four and one and four and I've gone across there. Let's hope I've done this okay. Let's set my seam and press it open. Now you can finger press this as you go if you want as well if you're not that fast but I'm just trying to do it as properly <laughs> um, <laughs> as properly as possible. So there we go. So I'm covering number four so I need to fold back between four and ten and i'm going to trim that away has anyone overtaken me at home or are they all are they all keeping a are you all between one and four at home i don't know let's trim that excess can you see the pattern we're, we're doing as well every time we're folding back so i'm gonna stitch between one and five and underneath there if i put my hand there you can see there's quite a lot of fabric going on there that we don't need so if I fold that between one and five I can then trim that fabric up like that and that just makes it easy I'm, and I'm getting a big pile of crumbs and if I get time at the end I'll show you another, another something so that's done so we need to do between one and five so i need another little bit i think something really bright and poppy so i think a re oh look at that bit <gasps> look at that. oh we're this way sorry i was pointing it the other way um, look at that bit shall we do that that looks cool doesn't it yeah we're going to go for that so i'm going to pop that there i'll put the pin in it turn it over see if it covers everything and it does look i can see the fabric popping up going to stitch that one and let my threads in place this time there we go only just it nearly came out and caused me problems again but there we go that's that one. Oh, it's looking exciting let's take my pin out let's give that a little press i haven't taken my threads away fold that back give that a little press you can see it's coming together isn't it it's getting there so turn it over we did number five not number 11 although it covers 11 and 14 we did number five but don't panic we can use that fabric for something else so i'm folding between five and eleven and i need to do a quarter of an inch seam allowance oh a bit bigger than a quarter of an inch but never mind cut that lovely scrap we've got that for future Sorry, I'm so, I'm so nervous I started singing. I don't normally sing on the TV, do I? I just carry on going. But um, I'm a little bit less professional sitting in my kitchen. Never mind. And then I'm going to fold over between one and six and trim that along there. 
sorry I keep moving it nearer to me and you can't see let's trim those black threads up so we need something to cover number six so just another little bit um so Dave and Steph you're looking at the tv tv screen as well what color shall we go for next oh. what the the gray i was thinking a nice bright yellow oh. he's boring isn't he do you think that gray <laughs> nah <laughs> what was you saying a, a nice bright yellow if you've got a nice yellow. well if you're used to yellow how, I mean, how about the orange yep yeah should we go orange something nice and poppy orange and pop that there pop in just double check on the other side and we're there is anyone keeping up with me at home i or... think so i've asked if they're keeping up or they're sewing ahead and we've just had a comment saying yes yellow oh oh sorry we got all we orange, orange. <laughs> near enough Catherine joined us she says hello hello Catherine. and she loves that we can watch this back at a later date yes exactly so if you're not keeping up or you want to have a go um you know you can come back to this this will be out there forever as i know because of some of my older videos <gasps> but you seem to love them so it's fine my quilt project says there is no wrong color you're agreed <laughs> i agree i agree there are no rights and wrongs it's just personal preference and now i've stitched that there I'm not that keen on it, but it all come together because I've got little uh, micro dot mode of fabric and little micro dot orange and blue opposite. But hey ho, I wouldn't normally have done that. But it's live. Is on with the grey? <laughs> no, really. Did did anyone hear that out there? Dave said it should have gone with the grey. <laughs> no. <laughs> Steph said nothing because we could get into a domestic. Um, keep out of it yeah keep out of it we might well, yes. so my quilt projects has commented saying this is an excellent tutorial for foundation piecing exactly this is, yes this is foundation piecing but it's sort of tiny and the reason i did this as well is because i've done it on a this is a five inch square so you could use it on um my five inch square template or um my hexagon or my triangle all of those or the smaller ones even although you wouldn't get as many crumbs but you can also extend it so once you've done this you can make it bigger and if you go through my entire um crumb patterns there's 12 designs and i think by the time you get to number 12 you won't need my designs you'll be able to freestyle and create your own wonderful crumb uh, designs and you might also get to the point where you don't need anything on your on your foundation so you actually start joining your crumbs and then joining your crumbs to more crumbs but yeah these are baby steps gives you the confidence then you can carry on I need to carry on otherwise we'll run out of time and that'd be going I want to go have dinner I want to go we, it's like midnight and you're still sewing because it's not going to be so again i'm folding over <laughs> straight back to it i'm folding over between oh i've got quite a big seam allowance so i trim a little bit more of that um there and now i'm going to stitch we've done six if you lose track of where you are you've got your numbers on here so we've done six so we've got to do number seven easy so no wrong colors so i'm just gonna go oh crikey he's right i've just picked a gray i did that random i had my eyes shut it was meant to be shall i put a gray in yep. keep dave happy yeah okay i've lost my pin did anyone see where my pin went and never mind i'll take another one i have to find that before the pussycats come back um sorry waffling i'm going to the sewing machine so i'm going to stitch between one and seven how are we doing steph how many people are with us actually we've got to... we have 36 people with us at the moment 36 hello everyone thank you for joining and elizabeth has just said oh. she had her crumb kit for a few weeks and this has got her started great fun for a sunday afternoon oh thank you elizabeth I don't pay elizabeth 
by the way. <laughs> um, oh, that doesn't look too bad. Okay, Dave, I'll, I'll give you. There's no right or wrongs. As, as who said no right or wrongs? My quilt projects. My quilt projects. There we go. No right or wrong. The grey actually looks quite cool. Now I'm getting to the edge. I am just going to trim off there. Nice big bit to use later. Now, so we've done seven. So where is number? So eight is up here. And it's this triangle here. So ignore those like Let's trim those off so you can see. So we need a section that will go into here. So I'm going to do, oh, I don't want black. What, does purple, oh no, we've got purple next door to it. I'm going to be a bit more choosy. It's mad, isn't it? I should be more, oh, look at that. That's a snazzy little bit. I'm going to go with that. Let's give that a bit of a press because it's got crinkles in it. It's handy having my eye in here. What do, you, what do you think of that, Steph? Do you think that's a good colour? Yep. Yep, let's, let's put that in there. And lock in. So we're sewing between 2, 3 and 8. So we're sewing this line here. Right. How are we doing on time as well? How long has it taken me so far with all my waffling? You've been going for half an hour. Oh, crikey. Time flies when you're having fun. So I'm going to press and fold over. If we might, I might have to um, stop and let you, um, I'll show you the final product. I think that's a good idea. If we've been going for half an hour, what does everybody else out there think? Let me know. Um, I'm going to keep trimming for a while. I do another couple and then I think we will call it a day and you can finish these all off at home. They're normally, oh, and that's Ella again. She's just come in to say hello. Yeah, hello. So I'm going to carry on sewing while I'm talking so that so we can get done. And I don't think that's going to cover, cover the end. Hello, Ella. Can Wait. everyone hear her out there? I don't know if you can. If I can hear her here, she's quite loud. We've had a couple more clothes. Oh, hello. With Paula from Florida. Oh, hello. Joanne from Alabama. Crikey, hello. And Kelly, who said hello earlier, she said she's currently working on your star in a hexagon quilt, the one behind you. Oh, the big one. The big. Oh, I love this quilt. It's different both sides as well. It's great. So I'm going to press that over. And we've got, um, there we go, Dave's. Dave's in the background doing funny. I don't know what he's on about. He was just saying the way you're sitting right in the middle, it looks like a halo with the orange. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. oh. Sun. But I'm not righteous. <laughs> in the quilting world, you are. Am I? Oh, thanks, Steph. I do. I do pay Steph. <laughs> <laughs> She has to say that. She has to be nice to me. <laughs> she's like, look, she's gone quiet now. She's like, oh, I'm not saying anymore. So 10. So do you get the hang of this? This is how we go and we just work the way around. What has anybody come back and said, keep going or I don't know? No. No comment. Catherine says she can hear Ella in the background, but she quite enjoys it. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, bless her. That's good. Ella's made her little TV debut as well. Um, so I think you get the gist of this. Oh, no, I can't believe the noise in the background. That's somebody outside. Um, this is how we, we go around. So I've got, here's one I made earlier, if I can move over. Here is one I made as a trial run. So it actually it's not too dissimilar really i've used lots of bright colors um yeah it's lovely so i want to show you if you want to remove the paper or the interlining from from your piece of work i'm going to show you how it's done so if i turn this and take the interlining can you see where i've used a little stitch it really rips easily Oh dear, hello Ella. I think she's needs more food. 
You all right? Oh, I, you didn't see her, but she was all behind. Can you see how easy this is just to rip this into lining away? She says, as it suddenly becomes more difficult. It's easy with paper. And you just find your next section and you pull it away. Those tiny little stitches just mean that you, you can get that out easily. And as you start, the next bit becomes easier and easier because it just pulls away like that. And then you get a more flexible piece of fabric and you can use that in your quilt. So this is great fun. Um, it does use up your scraps. It's great for recycling. I love a bit of recycling and I think they, the results look amazeballs. Um, regardless of what fabrics you use as well and you can put the most random pieces together i mean these are really quite random i've even got a little bit of ruby star um selvage i couldn't think of the word dave prompted me there yeah a bit of ruby star selvage there so really can use up all your scraps and it's great so I hope you've enjoyed that. I am going to show you the back of the quilt, but Dave's going to help me in a second. But I need to move this fabric and I need to move my pins and I need to keep the iron from burning. So here we go. I've just knocked the camera. So can you see if Dave lets that go? Thank you. Let go. That is the back of my quilt. Can you see? I've used the hexagon, but I've done a half hexagon and it gives you this stepping stone. But that is like a totally different quilt to the front of the quilt. So if I just grab that edge though and I move this over, that's the front. You would never believe the front is the back of that quilt. So that is that quilt so thanks kirsten for asking to see that and it is growing and it will grow so maybe on another youtube um tutorial it might be behind me um, and i hopefully you've all enjoyed this have we got any last questions we Steph? do have a last question oh. so valerie said yes more of this please oh thank you kirsten said thank you wonderful amazing oh yeah. Uh, Elaine has said, can you use thin fabric instead of the interlining and leave it in? Yes, you could actually. Um, and you could get some really nice effects as well. Because if you used like a really light fabric that had a bright print and use really pale fabrics on it, you will get some of that print coming through. So you've just prompted me to think of something else. So thank you for the design tip. That is really good because you could create something really amazing with that. Yes, so definitely. Well, I'm glad you all turned up to see it and I'm sure more of you will watch it after. And I hope some of you will even go ahead and bust your stash of scraps because if you're anything like me, I don't throw anything away. And it, it just makes amazing pieces of work. Well, I'm hoping I'm going to get to see you soon. Um, and I'll, I'll do another one, I'm sure. It's been great fun. And I'll post a blog in the week. And you can see the setup with my crazy cats and Steph and Dave. And see how cramped we all are here. <laughs> but until I see you next time, have lots of happy sewing fun. Thank you so much for joining me. So I'm just going to say... Bye-bye.